Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the CTT Stage 1 Counting. And up on my screen here I have the manual opened up. And it's only a few pages in the manual that actually describe the entire functions that we need for this operation. So Stage 1 uh, up counting. And what we'll see is our input mode is actually going to be set for up. And looking at the timing charts, you take the leading edge of CP1 without CP2 on and it will increment that count value up to the set point value. Then with the CP1 on all the time, it'll take the trailing edge of CP2 and the pulse is coming in on that um, line and increment that set value. So that's our up counting. We also have down counting that we can set, which we won't cover here in this example. And basically stage one counting is a single output setting and it's available. Um, and what happens is the two, both outputs operate at the same time and will turn on momentarily when the set value is, uh, the set value is equal to the present value or be maintained depending on the output mode that you've selected. So, we have several different output modes that we can choose from. In our example here, we're going to be doing uh, output mode N, but we also have F, which you see basically will tell you what the display is going to be doing during the time. Then we have uh, mode K, where you see we have some one shots here. It waits till the reset signal. Mode R, it will automatically reset. Uh, mode P, um, again, it looks like after the trailing edge, it then are on the reset, it uh, will reset again. So, several different modes that we can choose from to operate this uh, uh, multifunctional uh, counter timer tachometer unit. Then, what we have is our wiring diagrams in our manual. So, it'll tell us how to actually wire this unit up. And then we have our dip switch settings which are available on some of the different modes. This is one mode that's available on. And then we have our keypad display and how to program it. So looking back at our output here, what we're going to do is we'll have a reset or it'll start. Then the set value, present value will be put down to zero and the present value will start incrementing. As soon as I have my input pulses going on, it will go up to the set value. When it does, as soon as it hits the set value, it will turn on an output. And that output will be maintained in output mode N until I hit the reset. Then it will start all over again. So let's look at the actual programming itself. And again, we hit and hold the mode key to get into our programming. And the first parameter is actually our counter. You'll see that we have our timer counter tack and we have our mixed mode here. So we want counter, which is correct. Our next one is stage number one. We also have the other different modes that we'll be covering later. Our next is our up. So we have our up count, we have our down, we have then A, B, and C for our quadrature uh, inputs if we want. Next, we have our output mode. In our case here, we are using N. Then we have our count speed. And our count speed really indicate or uh, is determined by what we actually have coming into the actual counter itself. In our particular case, we're tra tracking this off of a relay. So we're going to set it for 200, which we have set here. Then this is our uh, point, our decimal point. Um, and what this allows us to do is change the decimal point number to where we want on um, that unit. And we have our prescale, and our prescale, what that is used to do is to convert into a unit that you want to see displayed on your device. So for example, if you're measuring distance, then what you want to do is you want to put in every pulse equals so much distance. You would have this as your prescale uh, value that you put in here. Next is our, our power save. So Right now, we're saving the values. However, if we wanted to, we could clear the values, um, meaning with the power goes off to the unit, everything gets cleared. But in our case, what we want to do is we want to hit save. So when power comes off, then when it re gets restored, the values that we see at our, at our present value will be maintained. 
heading mode again. This is our reset, which is set for 20 milliseconds. We could go down to as little as one millisecond for a reset signal. And then lastly, we have our, our output or input selection, which is PMP. It goes back to the way the inputs are actually wired. So hitting mode again, returns us back to the top of our list here, showing our function. So hitting and holding the mode key once again for, for three seconds, brings us back to our running mode. And we can see right now that we have a set value of 10. So we're looking for 10 counts. And what we'll do is we will actually turn on the, the counting pulse. And when we do, as it counts up, it'll go up to 10. And then we should actually hit the output. And you can see the output here on the side it is now on. We'll just stop the counts. And now what we'll do is reset it. So when we hit the reset, it resets it back to zero again. So exactly as my count here indicates. Now let's try that again. We'll go up to a few counts and then we'll stop it. Now what we'll do is turn power off and turn power back on again. And it, the, the present value is maintained because of the settings that we have here. Now all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. Give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, a notification will be given to you. Every time we publish new content to the site, you'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.